General Hyten, thank you for your uh, thank you for your service and uh, for your testimony today, Mr. Chairman. I would like to add into the record at this point an article in DoD News by Jim Garamoni, published March 31st of this year. General, in in this article, um, you state that um, we need to spend roughly six percent of the defense budget to modernize our country's nuclear arsenal. That would be an increase from 3.5 percent currently. Um, over what period of time do we need to increase from 3.5 percent to 6 percent of the defense budget? It's uh, in broadest terms, it's, it's 30 years, uh, but that's not a perfectly accurate because there will be a, a peak and a valley. So it will it will peak as we go into the significant production uh, levels. That will happen in approximately 10 years. That production peak will continue for roughly another decade as we deploy the new capabilities across each of the platforms I discussed earlier. And then it will drop off again over the last. But roughly, it's a 30-year time frame. Well, how about for the next few years? For the next few years, there will be a significant plus up, but it, it, uh, it won't grow to uh, six and a half percent until we actually get into the development programs, which are a couple of years away. Okay. And is, uh, is you, you quote uh, approvingly uh, the Air Force Chief of Staff, uh, General Goldfein, in this article. Is this the position of General Goldfein? That, that is the position of the United States Air Force and General Goldfein and the Acting Secretary Disbro. Is it the position, uh, to your knowledge, of the Secretary of Defense? To my knowledge, the Secretary of Defense supports uh, I know he supports modernizing the triad. He testified in front of this committee to that effect. Um, and But we will address all those issues in the nuclear posture review with the new administration. Just to emphasize that point again, I think it's important to remember the new administration will take a look at the entire threat posture, the entire modernization plan. Uh, but the Secretary of Defense, the Air Force leadership of all, and the Navy leadership of all pledged support to modernizing the triad. Now, in mentioning your priorities in, in response to an earlier question, you mentioned five priorities in modernization, and the first one you mentioned was submarines, the Ohio replacement or the Columbia class. Uh, so I was interested to, to see that you listed that first. So would, would it be correct to say that uh, not only is, is the first thing you mentioned, but it's your first priority? Uh, so the uh, first priority is the triad. Inside the triad, the first priority is the submarine. All um, right. But it's important to note that the triad as a whole has to be modernized. Nonetheless, uh, if we don't get after the submarine, then we, we run a very precipitous risk uh, in about a decade as the Ohio class reaches end of life. Okay, that, so that was going to be my next question. You, you painted a pretty grim picture of the future of the Ohio class if we don't, uh, if we don't start moving. And I think you said that it, it, will, it will be dangerous to actually put it under the water. Uh, there's, you know, the, you can probably tell from my uniform I'm not a naval officer. Uh, I do see that. Uh, but uh, I do have good friends who are naval officers, who are submariners, uh, and they've gone through the analysis with me in detail, including my uh, deputy, uh, Vice Admiral Chaz Richard. Uh, we've gone through that in detail, and, and they can tell me that um, the each submarine is built to go down under pressure a certain number of times. And once you reach the end of life, you know when that is, and you can predict very accurately when that is. And once you reach the end of life, it can't go down anymore. A submarine on the top of the water is not an effective deterrent. And that end of life uh, might occur as soon as when? Uh, it starts towards the end of the next decade. I can go into the details of when that would be in the closed hearing tomorrow, but it's well, towards the ends of the next decade. What can you tell us in this venue today about the modernized features of this new Columbia-class submarine? That's, uh, uh, I think the most significant element of the modernized feature is the actual nuclear reactor. Uh, the, the nuclear reactor on the Ohio-class systems basically required a refuel and, and refit uh, midway through its service life. Uh, the Columbia-class will have a 42-year reactor. So once it goes in service, besides the normal uh, maintenance and, and routine servicing. It will not have to come back for a, a refueling of the reactor, which will uh, allow us to operate uh, with 12 uh, Columbia submarines versus um, 
14 of the Ohio class. What about advanced materials in these, these new subs? There will, what there will be significant advanced that? materials, but I, I can't talk about that in detail in this hearing. But it will be materials that will increase the survivability and, and performance of the submarine in a threat environment. Thank you, sir.